So what are the risk factors for development of AKA in critically ill patients? There are both modifiable and uh, non-modifiable risk factors. Um, so what are the non-modifiable risk factors? Obviously, age, gender, ethnicity, you can't modify them, can you? So age, we all know more than uh, 60 years, they have increased propensity to develop a kidney injury with minimal insult. In gender, female um, um, patients that are more prone than male patients for AKI. And black and Afro-Caribbean patients, they're said to be more prone for AKI. And in the presence of comorbidities, we all know hypertension, diabetes, TKD, uh, heart failure, coronary artery disease or peripheral vascular disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, obesity, and malignancy. These are all independent risk factors for development of AKA in our patients. And, and these are unfortunately unmodifiable and only we can control some of them. So what are modifiable factors like sepsis, hypovolemia or hypervolemia and uh, the choice of resuscitation fluid, nephrotoxins, exposure to nephrotoxins, major surgery, trauma including burns, critical illness, anemia, emergency procedures, the contrast media that we use and COVID-19. COVID-19, a specific mention about this, uh, the COVID-19 was uh, one of the independent risk factors for development of AKA, especially in first part of uh, first type uh, epidemic of uh, COVID. Um, so these are all the modifiable risk factors which using which you can influence the uh, patients' um, AKA status. If you intervene early or modify the intervention, uh, you probably can avoid uh, AKA. Uh, in these situations. And uh, there is a nice uh, uh, publication. Uh, one so this uh, information is about uh, the etiology of uh, uh, etiology of AKI. Um, septic shock is the most common etiology in patients requiring uh, renal replacement therapy. This is best kidney study and uh, septic shock followed by major surgery, then cardiogenic shock, hypovolemia, drug related. These are uh, the major etiological factors for AKI in patients requiring renal replacement therapy. So septic shock is on the top as far as AKI requiring RRT is concerned. So what is the pathophysiology of AKI? So if we look at uh, the, this is a very colorful diagram uh, and very informative actually, though it's uh, not, uh, we don't go this deep when we look at our patients, when we treat our patients. You can see the interstitium, peritubular capillary here and uh, the a wall of the proximal tubule. So there, there are possibilities of injuries in the peritubular capillary endothelium or the proximal tubular wall and in the lumen of both the capillaries and the tubule. So what are the possible injuries? Interstitium, there is, um, um, sorry, endothelium, there is loss of endothelial cell-to-cell -cell junctions and increased capillary permeability and transmembrane receptor and cell addition molecule expression will be there. And leucos leukocyte endothelial adhesion and interaction and the transendothelial migration of the leukocyte. This is the, the, these are the pathological changes seen in peritubular capillary. And what happens in the proximal tubule? You can see that uh, uh, there is loss of cell-to-cell -cell, cell -cell junction and shell shredding is also there, and vacuolation, and loss of polarity, polarity of these uh, proximal tubular um, uh, uh, wall cells, and loss of transmembrane channels, which are very important for kidney function, and mitochondrial dysfunction. And these are all uh, physiological changes that can see, one can see if we do a biopsy, but 
we rarely get to do a biopsy of acute kidney injury patients. So this is good to know that all the possible pathological or uh, pathophysiological mechanisms, but you don't uh, tend, tend get to send a biopsy report in a patient with acute kidney injury. <laughs>